Hi everyone and welcome back to the Southerners Northern Garden. So it's been a little while since my last video. I actually haven't recorded a video for over a week now. So I wanted to take you around and show you how much I've gotten accomplished and just quickly tell you that I am swiftly running out of energy. And I have had a few no bones days this week and that's why I've not made any other videos. If you don't know what a no bones day is, I will link a video below. There's this cute pug and his owner circulating on TikTok right now. And the pug's like 13 years old and his name's Noodles. And every morning the guy wakes him up. And if Noodles can stand freely on his own, it's a bones day and he has bones and it's gonna be a good day. And if he falls over or slumps over, that's a no bones day. And it's just a very tiring and exhausting day. So I've had a few no bones days over the past week. And that's why I've not recorded another video. But let me take you around and show you that I am kind of running into a plant shortage. And I'll show you what that means. So out of all the 200 or so shrubs that I ordered to plant in the ground this fall, this is all I have left. And these two uh, tater tot arbor vitae right here will be going in front of the arbor and the rest of the ones I will be potting up and overwintering in my raised vegetable garden. I think it will be good to keep a few of these extras uh, on hand for next year in case one just doesn't do good over winter. I ended up only having one boxwood left. This one actually will go in the ground. It's a variety I've not seen locally anywhere and it is called Interstella. It's an evergreen, but it's a lily of the valley shrub, and it's really quite remarkable, these blooms right here. And so I'm going to put that on the south side, on the new side of the fence, uh, but I've just got it held over here until I get mulched down uh, this weekend. I do have all of these hookera left, which I have got to find somewhere to place those. Uh, some may go kind of around the arbor area. I may tuck them in the front somewhere because I've not put a lot of shrubs uh, or anything that I purchased up front this year. So overall, out of all those shrubs I ordered, can you believe that I got over half of them planted in the past week? Most of them were done Saturday and Sunday. Um, so I am super excited that that is completely over with. So a lot of those shrubs were evergreen and I just wanted to mention this brief fact. Uh, that I stumbled upon the other day that I wasn't necessarily aware of, but that I have not personally dealt with in my garden. Uh, it's not recommended to plant some evergreen shrubs in fall. The reason being that if you live in a dry winter climate, uh, they may not get adequate moisture over winter, and because they maintain their leaves, they could easily dry out and die over winter. Where I live, we typically have a pretty wet winter, um, sometimes so soaking wet that our ground uh, has issues with the grass if we just happen to walk on it in winter uh, getting super muddy because of the clay soil. So that's not something I am concerned about. I did try and get those in last weekend simply because when I looked at the weather forecast we were expected to drop down to 30 this coming Sunday. The weather forecast has changed and that's no longer the case but what I'm going to be doing is spraying all of my evergreens with wilt stop this weekend. Um, and I will take you along as I do that. Wilt Stop is a pine resin product that I have put on my boxwoods for the past two years and it has prevented any die off. So I had mentioned the evergreens around the maple. Half of those are winter green variety. And the first year I planted those as small shrubs, they did not do very well at all. They had significant winter dieback. And so what I did was I dug those up the next spring, repotted them and stuck them uh, out in the mini orchard and gave them adequate water to allow them to regain some of that growth over a season and they spent almost another year at least a whole season in their containers and they're back in the ground now and i think they will do pretty well i sprayed everything with wilt stop this past winter and i had no winter dieback on any of my boxwoods i am also going to be spraying my uh, arborvitae as well the tater tot arborvitae that i planted and any other evergreens including the uh, inkberry hollies that i have planted the strong box and the gem box around the borders as well as the green giant arborvitae but i did get that moved on sunday and i've been watering it uh, sufficiently i want to water it every day as it goes into winter and freezing ground temperatures and then i will spray it with the wilt stop to help stop some of that moisture loss and hopefully it will survive and transplant well and then next year it will continue on its growth i am considering extending the green giant hedge to the end of the property line on this side you notice it kind of stops that was partially to block off some 
uh, structures that are on a property behind us. And so I'm thinking about now that we have the fence continuing those evergreens on. Costco this year had them at one of our local Costco's, the Green Giants, for around $20 to $25 a piece. And they were already quite large. And so although they won't be the same height, they will catch up over time and you won't really be able to tell so much that they were planted three years apart. So. Uh, that's a consideration for spring, but let's go take a look at what I got done this past week. So I finished edging the bed here um, and I planted a hedge of tater tot arborvitae around and in the center are perennials called yellow my darling coneflowers. Uh, they're looking a little rough. We'll see if they survive over winter. I'm hoping they do well. This is a new bed so it could be a little iffy uh, of course, but Hopefully coneflowers are pretty resilient and they'll do just fine. This is the nine bark that I mentioned in a previous video that I picked up very early this spring when I saw it on sale. It is a summer wine nine bark. It looks a little rough because it was in its container all year, but I got it planted and I don't have drip running to any of this. I mentioned I will do all that in the spring, but it should stay sufficiently moist here that it has plenty of water over winter. It will acclimate pretty well and then come back with a vengeance uh, in the spring. As I enter the backyard, I actually finished moving the boxwoods and edging up uh, to this corner post here. And then I got my irises planted from um, Shriners Gardens. I ordered several irises from them and I have been really impressed. I actually had one rebloom already uh, and the roots that they had put on in just a month or two in those containers were fantastic. So they were really healthy and I really recommend them. We'll see how they do next year, but I suspect they will do really well. I did end up planting the Pearl Glam Beautyberry right here. And so that will be a very nice shrub that takes up most of this area and it will uh, have beautiful purple berries in fall that will complement the stems to this Arctic Sun uh, dogwood here. And so as you can see, I just continued down, not a whole lot changed here. I did plant a sweet summer love clematis right here directly behind this oak uh, and my expectations, it gets very large and so I'm going to train it up the fence and then down both to the left and to the right and that will be a beautiful amount of blooms and coverage for the fence area right there. I did get the Limelight Prime hydrangeas installed and continued the boxwood hedge around the side here. And then over here, I did the same thing, Limelight Prime Hydrangea and the Gym Box Inkberry Hollies. I tucked in a ton of Heuchera, which I mentioned I might be putting along this pathway here. This is the Red Rover variety. You can see the leaves are finally uh, turning quite red here. Uh, Heuchera, I have discovered that they don't do very well their first year. I planted some last fall and they just sat there, but literally when it started getting warm in the spring, they took off and it looked like they had been there for years. So I expect these will grow up really quickly in the spring, considering the amount of roots they put on when I transplanted them up into their bigger containers. The Atlas Rose that I moved from the front flower bed is still continuously doing much better. It's putting on a ton of buds and it looks so much healthier in this location than where it was. Over on this side, I put some more of the Yellow My Darling cone flowers. I think they will complement both the uh, Little Honey Hydrangea here and this Candy Corn Spirea. Down here, I planted a few more of the Yellow My Darling Echinacea and they will complement also these barberries pretty nicely as well. The blooms, the yellow will be a nice contrast between the purple and then the Golden Ticket Privet there. I did plant over a hundred perennials yesterday. And I know what you're thinking, Matthew got rid of a lot of perennials. And that is true, but I'm trying some new varieties. One of those is Peach Sky Yarrow, which I've had in my garden before. I really, really love that apricot orange color in yarrow. I have found that you should be kind of selective of which yarrow you pick. I selected a unnamed variety from a supermarket a couple years ago, and I actually pulled that out this year because it was super, super invasive. It was spreading extremely quickly and something that I did not want in my garden at that rate. The bloom color was also red, which kind of clashed with my color palette on that side of the house. And so it had to go and I removed it this weekend or a couple weeks ago and just wanted to make sure there was no remnants left over before I planted anything in its place. Down here behind me next to the bench, I planted some pink -a dot um, Phlox, which is a variety by Proven Winners that's fairly new. It's supposed to be uh, ever blooming throughout the summer. We'll see if it does. I just wanted kind of a nice drift of it there. 
but you can tell something different is about this area and that's because I removed the hibiscus and planted them over there on the fence like I mentioned. So it completely opened up the space and will give me a much better vantage of all the bloomstruck hydrangeas that I planted right here uh, a couple weeks ago. And so those are looking great. The blooms are drying up a little bit. I'm not a little concerned about that as we're going into fall. They would have fallen off or dried up anyway but I'm not seeing a whole lot of issues with them so they're acclimating pretty well to the soil so far and those will look really great um, next spring hopefully. Down here on the ground I planted the lamium that I had in the container with the new hydrangea out front. I'll give you an update on that very briefly. It looks like I need to come out here and water some of that. It did not like being pulled apart so easily so I'll come out here with a water hose and get that watered after this video. I continued this peach guy yarrow um, right here next to this uh, sun gold Japanese maple. I think that's what it was called. It was in my Japanese maple video. Uh, so there's a little yarrow in front of that peach guy and then we'll have the serendipity alliums and the hookah when they arrive in a couple weeks will be planted directly in front of those. Hopefully the weather cooperates and I'm able to get those hookah in the ground and it's not extremely cold when they arrive because if they are that could be a problem. I expect they will be fine though. I may allow them to acclimate a few days outside just in the cold temperatures before I stick them in the ground out in the elements. So that's a consideration if you're getting plants this time of year you might want to do especially if they're coming out of a greenhouse where they're warm. I did extend some of the uh, grass here. You can see I put it around those. I have some grass left over that after we get mulch in I'm going to continue putting along those stones right there. These are the green tower boxwoods that I got planted and then I'm not sure if this was in a video or not. I did plant the strong boxes. They're tiny tiny things right here all the way down the back of the fence line. Over here I got a dwarf pink bloomerang lilac from Great Garden Plants which is where I purchase a lot of my smaller shrubs. Uh, and then I also have this um, tiny wine nine bark as well that I decided would look really nice there with the dark foliage contrast with this uh, barberry right here that actually started coloring up a little bit. Of course the leaves are changing now later in the season uh, because it is not evergreen in my zone. I'm not sure if barberry is evergreen in any zone but you can see what it'll look like uh, next spring when it leaves out again there. It's just a really gorgeous color. Behind the nine bark, I planted some more peach sky yarrow. So I'm trying to repeat that throughout the garden. I think it'll look really nice as well with those pink blooms from the roses, which are actually blooming their heads off uh, this early being put in the ground and this late in the season. That's why I really selected this variety and why I really like that variety. You can see as the roses transition out, um, they get a little purple in them and it's just a really nice uh, looking bloom here in this area. I continued the liriope I had left over down this bed right here and got the tiny ginkgo planted. So this is where I end up putting the Fairy Trail Bride Cascade Hydrangea that I did a solo video on earlier this year. So the Cascade Hydrangea is a new variety type for this year uh, and it's super interesting because it blooms all along the stem. I did not end up getting any blooms on it this year, which is kind of disappointing, but I think it may not have had enough sunlight or attention from me on the front porch. My supertunias do pretty well on the front porch, but this one was maybe a little more shrouded from the sun than it probably would have liked. So I stuck it here and it'll get pretty good sunlight. Um, and it will get a little larger than the area I gave it for, close to the bed here. But I did end up deciding that I'm going to go ahead and bring this bed out and connect it to the bed over here. And so all of this area will be, there'll be a small walking path and then there'll be a little bit of planting space in front of it. That when we bring mulch in, I will probably prepare this fall, but it won't be planted until next spring. Or it might give me an opportunity to put annuals in my garden right here, which might be really nice or a patch of zinnias. I did plant this hydrangea, which is a macrophylla that my dad sent me for my birthday a few weeks ago. Um, it is absolutely gorgeous. I don't know, since it's a macrophylla, if it will rebloom next year. If it doesn't rebloom, we may have to remove it from the garden. But right now, it looks really beautiful and is this nice blue color uh, accent next to the shed here. I need to do some serious cleanup. If you can see here, these are all the things I planted over the past couple weeks. 
uh, and there are just a ton of things I need to recycle. So going up the fence line here, you can see where I moved the hibiscus. So that is the cherry chocolate hibiscus. I really love it. I'm going to leave the stem standing during winter just because I don't want any water uh, or freeze getting into the crown of the plant. And just this evening, I came out and I planted some of the remaining boxwoods and created the short hedge here leading up to the arbor. And so we'll have the sprinter boxwoods on this side, which will be a nice hedge eventually, and then the hedge of sprinters on this side. I don't think I have enough room on this side to put any perennials in front of those because the way the gate opens, it opens uh, towards the fence here. And so I may just put a line of perennials right here. And I have selected this grass. It's called Feather Falls. It's a Carex, which is really gorgeous and has kind of uh, curly stems here. Uh, it'll be, I think, a nice variegated texture that I can put in front of those boxwoods. So these are destined, at least some of them, for right there. The rest of them I will probably put in a back flower bed. I have the dwarf mondo grass left over and then this one Japanese maple that I haven't planted quite yet because I need to mulch behind the shed and I don't want it getting trampled in the process. So that one's going to be planted this weekend when we put down the mulch. So next to the arbor I did end up removing those lavenders right here and I put in some tater tot arborvitae for evergreen interest. In front of those are some more of the yarrow. Uh, the peach sky yarrow and in front of that on the very front here is back in black sedum uh, which i'm really excited to see in my garden next year i did put a lot of the back in black throughout this area in general uh, this is where i had the yarrow that was taking over that i mentioned uh, so i put black and black sedum there this is the south side of my house and i'm not very excited with how it looks in general and so it gets super super hot and i've just struggled uh, with things on this side of the house since I started gardening really. So this area will probably get a revamp next year depending on how these sedums do. There's just some stuff over here that I would like to remove like this yucca. I think it would look really nice in a concrete container in the backyard and so I may be moving the yucca to the backyard. And just in general I'm not happy with how things look over here. It's just never seemed very cohesive to me. Uh, and that's something I need to work on. It's not an area of the yard I show very often on videos just because I'm not happy with it. And so that's something we can work on and dream about over the winter and how to address that. The vegetable garden is getting pulled out this weekend because the freeze is quickly approaching and everything looks really, really bad already. So that's going to be coming out. And we're going to be prepping and preparing for spring and our seeds, what we need there and then overwintering those containers and those small shrubs that I mentioned uh, in the vegetable garden. And that, my friends, is pretty much everything that I got done over the past week. Tomorrow, uh, or Friday, I will probably come through and go ahead and cut back perennials. My main reason being that if we are going to mulch this weekend, that I can throw some mulch on top of those things after they are cut down. So, um, that may be something I do. I would like to do a final garden tour, but I may do a garden tour after those things are cut down and that way you can see what it kind of looks like as my garden is coming to rest in winter. I am not really interested in putting down a significant amount of mulch this year at the end of the season, but I do think it's something I need to do to wrap up the edges of the garden. As you can see, we still have the uncovered landscape fabric and I don't really want to leave that over winter and I want to make sure all the plants that I just planted in the ground have a sufficient insulation layer for this coming winter which they're expecting to be pretty bad. I'm hoping it ends up not being as bad as they think it will be simply because I just put all this stuff in the ground but if it is I think the plants will do well anyway. Uh, I haven't had a whole lot of loss over winter in my garden before. The only issues I've had really are those boxwoods uh, having some die back and even then they didn't completely die off um, they lived but they just didn't look good after that winter so this coming week we'll be applying the wilt stop to help prevent some of that moisture loss but I'm super ready to put the garden to bed because I just need a break over winter and a nap and some inspiration to come back and finish unfinished things in the spring. I don't know how much mulch I will need. I'm not the best at estimating mulch. I've gotten better at it as I've put more in my garden 
but with specific areas like this, like covering around the entire fence where we need it over that landscape fabric, it's really difficult for me to estimate. I think we need a minimum of three yards just to cover the landscape fabric on the back side of the yard here. And that's because that's about how much we put one year on the Green Giant Arborvitae in general. So I think a minimum of three yards, we're probably gonna need closer to six to eight to fully um, tidy up the areas of the garden that I would like, which at least it'll be cool and it's not the hot of summer, but it's still not something any of us gardeners particularly love to do, I think. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I got done this past week. It was super productive and I'm really glad to see things finally getting buttoned up uh, for the year. I'm going to be super busy over the next week or two. I will try and put some video content out there. One of the things I need to do is prepare my house plants for being brought in over winter. I don't bring a whole lot of house plants outside, but I have a few on the patio uh, that I need to get in, including the ficus that you can see right here behind my head. Uh, and that is a priority to do in the coming day or so because with winter quickly approaching, some people would have probably brought in their house plants already. And so I'd need to get that done though since we've already had a predicted very low uh, with the weather change that gives me an indication that it's gonna be soon before we have our first freeze and I don't want those out here and completely ruined from a freeze. So thank you guys for joining me. We're losing light. I hope you enjoyed this video and remember in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care everyone. Bye.